Fear and grief, two things that probably all of us will feel at some point in our lives. Grieving for lost loved ones, grieving for a better time in your past. To be honest, any sort of big change can bring a sense of grief or a sense of fear. I've come up against these two feelings quite a lot this year. It's 2020 and fear and panic is everywhere during this pandemic. In the space of a couple of days, my work situation crumbled, social events were all cancelled, and fear is just in the headlines. On top of all this, recently I lost a friend to cancer and an elderly family member passed away as well. There's been challenges and tears as I wonder what the future holds, but there is one who isn't phased by what's happening. It's not new or shocking to him. He isn't even phased by death because he did it. He died and then he came back to life. When he came back to life, his friend Mary was still at the gravestone crying and she couldn't recognize him because of just all the tears and the pain. And she thought he was the gardener and he said, did you see where they took him? Where did they take the body? And he just replied with Mary. He said her name and that was the answer to the question, where is he now? Well, he's in you. Now, he didn't say stop crying, stop feeling things, and he didn't say move on, go somewhere else, do something else. No, he said despite your fear, despite your grief and your emotion right now, I am here. I am with you. The gardener is right here. And why a gardener? Well, you see, the first man, Adam, was a gardener who failed in his task and the world became a wasteland. But this second Adam will redeem it. Christ will restore the ruined garden. He turns wastelands and ugly situations into beautiful, thriving gardens of life. Watch. Watch what happens after all this is over. And remember that this is just a season. In some seasons, the gardener pulls out his shears and pruning can be a painful experience in the moment we're thinking, ah, what are you doing? But the gracious intentions of the good gardener are always the same, to prepare you to flourish. Jesus says, every branch of mine that bears fruit will be pruned so it can bear more fruit. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper, and instead of the briars, the myrtle will grow. That means instead of the painful thorns and the ugly weeds that symbolize grief and fear, there will be flowers that symbolize restoration, healing, and joy. He isn't the lawyer accusing, bringing judgment. He isn't the tax collector obsessed with your money. He is a gardener and his work is earthy and intimate. He handles living things, life, beauty, and he's ready to work on the garden that is your life, turning your wastelands into Edens, turning pain, grief, fear, into beauty, peacefulness, and hope. Growing takes time. It happens over seasons. Let him work. Watch it grow.